a goat gave birth to something remarkable, a Pyrenean ibex. This unique subspecies of Spanish ibex had once roamed the Pyrenees Mountains on the border of Spain and France where they were endemic. What was more remarkable than a goat giving birth to a different animal was over three years earlier on January 6, 2000, the last Pyrenean ibex, a female named Celia, died when a tree fell on her in the night. Yet here was a living ibex, a clone of Celia. In 1999, tissue had been collected from this last ibex, and after her death, a biotechnology company got the Spanish government to give them the opportunity to use these samples to attempt cloning. Three years of work and some 285 embryos later, a baby Pyrenean ibex was on earth again. But something was wrong, and she died within minutes of being born, her lungs physically deformed. The idea of resurrecting extinct creatures, which had been relegated to science fiction ten years prior to the birth of Celia's clone, is now something that has to increasingly be considered more seriously. So how do you bring back an extinct species? In the process of cloning Celia, the scientists extracted nuclei from the frozen tissue samples and fused them into the egg cell of a goat that had had its nucleus removed. The egg then reprograms the tissue DNA to form a stem cell, forming an early embryo. This then is inserted into a surrogate mother and allowed to develop, and after a couple of months a baby Pyrenean ibex is born. But this is not the only way to pursue de-extinction. Another method being attempted with the quagga, a special subspecies of zebra extinct since the late 19th century, and the aurochs, the ancestor of cattle which disappeared sometime in the 1600s, is backbreeding. People can breed individuals of either a related subspecies or domestic descendant with traits similar to an extinct species, and breed them together, eventually resulting in an approximation of a quagga or aurochs. And in fact, there are now a handful of quagga-like zebra around South Africa that will hopefully lead to a small population. Finally, comes the power of genetic engineering and gene editing. Discovered in bacteria as a defense against viral attack, the special protein Cas9 locates viral DNA inserted into the bacterial genome and cuts it out. This technique, which we call CRISPR, allows scientists to edit and modify DNA as they please, say putting parts of the genome of an extinct species into an egg cell, creating a hybrid, or even a present-day species germ cells, making the modified individual in theory to be able to parent some kind of hybrid of the extinct species and the parent species due to not all of the genetic material being edited. This opens up more possibilities because cloning so far has only worked in non-monotreme mammals, but genetic engineering allows the potential de-extinction of birds, amphibians, and reptiles. So what species are being considered potential candidates for resurrection? Perhaps the most talked about is the woolly mammoth. Mammoth remains frozen and mummified in Siberia offer a potential wealth of genetic material, though straight-up cloning may be impossible. But using genetic engineering, the DNA of Asian elephants could be modified to create a hairy, cold-adapted elephant. The genome of the passenger pigeon is being messed around with, and plans are to create a passenger pigeon-like bird sometime in the 2020s. More interesting to me is the fact we apparently have the entire genome of the thylacine, the famed Tasmanian tiger. This has led to speculation that a baby thylacine may be born by the late 2020s. The dodo, perhaps the most famous recently extinct species, also apparently has its entire genome sequenced. Of course, another attempt to create a Pyrenean ibex could always happen, and even a living embryo of the extinct gastric brooding frog has been made. Like any new emerging technology, this whole concept has detractors who have some deep concerns. No, probably not a park full of dinosaurs running amok and eating tourists. The primary concerns are more philosophical in nature. Are de-extinct creatures the same as the ones that went extinct? If we can just resurrect species, is conserving endangered species even important? Where are some of these creatures even going to go? Is it ethical to clone and genetically engineer species as we see fit? Is it a huge waste of money? I am going to go into my own thoughts towards the end, but basically a resurrected species is going to be different. More obviously with backbred oryx and quagga or some hairy elephant than say a clone of Celia, However, they can fulfill some of the ecological holes left behind, which is the idea of rewilding. Just these would be dressed up like the lost species. People often challenge the de-extinction of mammoths because the habitat they existed on, the mammoth steppe, no longer exists. 
However, experiments in Russia have shown that introducing herds of large mammals will cause tundra to become grassland, like the ancient steppe, giving credence to the theory that it was the extinction of the mammoth that destroyed its habitat, not the other way around, thus they might have a place to go. The thought that if we clone extinct species, then people will just say let endangered species go extinct because we can just make them again, is one of the more troubling questions posed by this technology, and I am really not sure on the answer. However, this does lead into the whole question of money. Because this expensive work can distract from other conservation efforts, or worse, steal from the limited conservation funds used to protect living animals and ecosystems. The process of cloning has some serious ethical and practical issues that have to be discussed. Clones usually have serious health problems, probably associated with trying to make an adult somatic cell into a stem cell, but it could just be due to our current techniques. Celia's clone did not develop correctly, and it may be clones born from a surrogate mother of a different species may not be able to grow into adulthood, as projects where rare wild animal clones have been born from domestic animals have all resulted in premature deaths after a few minutes, hours, or months. I think these technologies and techniques have some really interesting and possibly revolutionary applications to conservation biology. If we can get DNA out of museum specimens, perhaps we can add genetic diversity back into small inbred populations of endangered species using CRISPR or cloning. This would be a game changer. I do think that de-extinction ultimately cannot recreate what we have lost. Animals are quite complex with learned behaviors not encoded in DNA, and this culture was extinguished with the last individual. We are creating approximations of these animals. Even if we achieve something genetically identical, it would not behave exactly like that which we have lost. Extinct species also likely had distinctive gut biomes that are sadly also extinct, and we have no way to study or replicate them. That said, I would love to go see these proxies. I want to go see the selectively bred quagga, and would totally go to Russia to see a hairy elephant mammoth, and would be super stoked about a thylacine, passenger pigeon, or dodo, and perhaps seeing this will be inspirational to people, seeing what we have lost and making them more interested in protecting what we have. I think this idea of valuing learned animal behavior is the way to beat the idea of just resurrecting a species later and letting it die out now, and also perhaps allows less conventional conservation techniques to be employed. In Hawaii, the native birds are being decimated by introduced disease, but one species, the common amakihi, has developed an immunity. What if we took those genes and gave them to their endangered brethren, speeding up the process of evolution? One could argue that a slightly genetically modified akia polaau, raised by akia polaaus, would be more of an akia polaau than a clone of an akia polaau raised by some other species or people. This would perhaps also protect what remains of genetic diversity if we argue they would either gain this mutation naturally through a bottleneck or go extinct. This is a brave new world, and we have to be careful to make conservation and reversing the defaunation of the planet our priority, not some sort of tourist attraction. One final thought on backbreeding. Perhaps one day, we can use genetic engineering to give those quagga or aurox approximations a little bit of the original animal's genome to allow some of those genes, now an evolutionary dead end, to have a second chance to spread and evolve into the future. I hope you enjoyed and learned from my dive into the science of de-extinction. I really want to hear your thoughts on this topic down in the comments section below. This video is part of an ongoing Fundamentals of Conservation Biology series, with a new episode coming out each and every month, so if you enjoyed this video, Give it a thumbs up so the algorithm does not make this video go extinct. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell so you can be notified when the next video in this series comes out. Thank you for watching, I really appreciate it. Bye.